fastball from Gruler. It's been all fastball in this at bat now with the count full. I'm, you may want to see him go off speed here if you're the Huskies. A walk here would not be good for them. Here's the full count offering to Davila who looks at ball four and he will take first base. So a walk from Gruler. As that brings up the dangerous Jack Rogers, who enters this game today with an 11 game hitting streak. And it is, uh, he's batting 391 this season, nearly 400 with his batting average. That is impressive for the young junior. Out of Spring, Texas, Klein Collins High School, and he'll dig in here to face Gruler with a runner on and one out. Gruller checks the runner at first. We'll go over to pick him off. Doesn't do it as Davila gets back in time. Rogers digging in here, hoping to uh, get a pitch here. Davila very fast on the base paths. This Gruller out of the stretch will deliver to Rogers. First pitch is an off speeder, and it is called strike one. Rogers now. Davila, sizable lead over at first. Gruler will deliver to Rogers and fouls one back to the backstop 0 and 2. 85 on the gun that time. As the uh, one thing from last night, Austin Spinney was throwing these really just, uh, you know, for college players, slow fastballs, and the Bearcats could not catch up to them. So that's one thing to watch out for today if that's going to be the same thing from Gruler. Ruler coming in today with a 3.180 RI pickoff again to try and get Davila very close there, but he gets back. Rogers trying to dig back in here, down 0-2, one out. Runner at first, Davila. Gruler checks him. Gets set here out of the stretch and will deliver. And Rogers hits a short chopper and that is passed. The shortstop Soriano, so a base hit for Jack Rogers, and then it's going to be runners at second and first for Trent Touche, as that's the first hit of the ball game off the sh sh short chopper that got by Soriano in the left field. As now that brings up Touche. A lot of juniors in this lineup for Sam Houston State, Jack Rogers, Touche, Bryce Holmes, Christian Smith, and Corbin Vine, so a very seasoned lineup, if you will. And now Touche digs in the designated hitter, batting 375. Three RBIs this season. He'll dig in with a runner in scoring position, and it's a double steal as Davila is just going to get gunned down with uh, just no doubt in my mind that he was out as he got beat by about three or so steps. So that'll make it out number two. Rogers does steal second, so he is now four of four with stolen bases and stolen base attempts. So that takes away the runner that would have been ended up at third, but we still have a runner in scoring position at second in Rodgers. And Touche, that pitch was an 0-1. Here is the 0-1. That one's low, 1-1 one and one on the uh, slider there from Gruler. Gruler, very good with runners in scoring. With runners on, he, he's batters against him are 194 with two out there, 200. So he's done very well this season with that. Here's the pitch as that one is hit and gloved by Franson. Throw on the first, and that'll end the inning. So the Bearcats get a run, get two runners on, one to scoring position, one caught stealing. And after all that, one hit, nothing to it. We'll go to the top of the second. The Bearcats defense back out onto the field. Todd Jackson, Brandon Bina, and Cal Clark do up for the Huskies here in the top of the second as they will get ready to face Dominic Robinson. We'll be back on 90.5 KSHU.
here at Don Sanders Stadium. A very quiet first inning on both sides. HBU not getting anything, hoping to get something here. So we're back at the Don, we like to call it out here in Huntsville. And leading off the top of the second will be Todd Jackson for the Huskies to face Dominic Robinson. Robinson already with a strikeout in this game. Very good against guys that lead off the inning. He They only hit 176 against him. His ERA dipping closer to getting below one as he's at 104 right now. And the first pitch from Robinson, and it is called a ball, and Jackson checked the swing apparently, so 1-0 and on that 86-mile-an-hour fastball from Robinson. Digging back in, Jackson swings at that one there, 80 miles an hour off speeder. And that'll make the count one and one. Jackson batting 300 this season. Very good as a leadoff hitter, 714. There's the pitch, swung on again. One and two there on a pitch that was low and outside. Now one, two count, Robinson. Hoping to get a First batter strikeout, and he won't with that one as that pitch was in the dirt. Two and two is the count. Just to my knowledge, Todd Jackson did not play last night from behind the plate. Two two pitch, swung on, foul back to the screen. Count remains at two and two. Brandon Bina on deck, guy who had an incredible game last night against the Bearcats. Went three for five, three RBIs, a double, two runs, and only struck out once. As here is Robinson with the 2-2 pitch. That one was high. And actually, no, that's going to hit Todd Jackson on the elbow. So Huskies get a runner here to lead off the inning with, Bina, with the dangerous Bina coming up. Bina, excuse me, Bina batting 230. This season, really good with runners in scoring position, or just on base, 296. Not very good on base percentage, though, at 254, so maybe trying to do some damage here against Robinson. Here is the first pitch from Robinson to Bina. It's outside, 1 0. As stated, Gavin Johnson catching Robinson today, the lefty pitcher. Last night, Davis, the righty pitcher, so Gavin Johnson did not start last night. That was West Falls behind the plate last night. So Jackson getting some starting action today. Here is the 1-0 pitch to Bina, and it's fouled back to the screen 1-1. One one. Looked like that bounced off of the catcher, Johnson. As I said, good crowd on hand today here at Don Sanders Stadium. HBU's brought a good crowd of the, for themselves as well. Spring break weekend, you'd think a lot of people would just be already out of town, but they want to spend their first day of spring break out here at the ballpark here in Huntsville, Texas. Bina stepped out for a moment. Dig back in to face Robinson. Here's the 1-1. In there for strike two. A slider there that just froze Bina. Couldn't do anything with it. Makes the count one and two. And Jackson over at first. He's gotten a couple looks from Robinson. But hasn't made a move to pick off with nobody out. HBU still looking for their first hit. And the one-two pitch from Robinson is fouled off by Bina. And the bat bat will continue. Infield playing straight up. Outfield playing in. Against Bina. Very surprising as Bina was able to take a very good couple of cracks last night. In the 7-2 win over the Bearcats. It's very interesting that they are playing close here. Still a 1-2 count. Robinson checks the runner, and he will deliver to Bina. Swung on and fouled back to the screen again. So the at-back continues. Another foul. Seventh pitch of the at-back coming up. Dominic Robinson out of, out of uh, excuse me, Tomball Memorial High School in Tomball just down the road. 
Hoping to get something here with a runner on. Hits a chopper to short. Gloving it is McKenzie, and he's only going to get the one at second as Bina reaches on the fielder's choice. So one out with that. Good awareness by McKenzie to just take his time and get the lead runner, Jackson, at second. And with that, that will bring up number 15, Cal Clark. He's batting 333. This season, not very good with runners on, batting 182. A good on base and slugging percentage, so you got to be watch out for his bat. But the outfield stays the same with the runner on and with one out. And here's the pitch from Robinson, and that one is in there at 87, but called a ball. That one looked pretty good, but that is called a ball by the home plate umpire, Alex Ziegler. So a little bit of a break there for Cal Clark. Robinson will try to dig back in as the runner goes, and that's fouled back. One and one. Very interesting. The HBU last night, they were very active on the base paths. A team that was projected by the conference to finish last only had 49 votes. And then showed their stuff last night against the Bearcats, who by that same committee is projected to win the Southland Conference. 1-1 one, one pitch is low and inside, 2-1. and one. Clark, as I said, batting 333. Eight hits, four RBIs. No home runs for him yet. Has a couple of doubles. HB had six of those last night, excuse me, seven of those against Bearcats. Pickoff move by Robinson, but being a well back in time as he'll just step over to get back to the bag. A 2-1 count against Clark. Good battles here early on in this inning for Dominic Robinson. He'll pick off move again to Bina, but nothing happening. And he'll probably get ready to face Clark again. On deck is Horgan for HBU. The freshman who's in a few been on a few games this year, so his batting average is uh, abnormally high. Here's the two one swung on and missed by Clark. Two and two is the count. He's mentioning Horgan is batting six fifteen, so would assume he hasn't been in many games this season, or maybe he's just hitting that good for the Huskies early on in this season, who are four in ten after last night's win. Runner at first, batting is Clark facing Robinson. And Robinson checks the runner, and he will deliver the 2-2. Swing and a miss. Clark goes down, swinging. That is strikeout number two for Dominic Robinson. And with that, that brings up Horgan. The designated hitter this afternoon in Huntsville. So Robinson doing a very good job trying to get out of this trying to get out of this inning after the hit by pitch to open the inning. Horgan held up but called a strike there. 87 miles an hour on the gun to make the count 0 and 1 with two out. Due up for Sam Houston in the bottom half of the second is Bryce Holmes, Christian Smith, and Gavin Johnson. Should Robinson get out of this inning right here? 0 1 pitch. Called low, oh, and excuse me, one and one with that fastball coming in there from Robinson here against Sean Horgan. Horgan this year, very good at hitting with two out, batting 833 so far. They were very good about that last night as a team. So we'll see if that replicates today. The 1 1 off speeder is in there for strike two, the long curve from Dominic Robinson. And now Robinson is one strike away from getting out of this half of the inning. Only runner is the one that was hit by the pitch. It's Horgan chokes up on the bat and awaits the one-two pitch. Here it is. Just off the plate, another off-speeder. Another off-speed curveball. Call the ball. Two and two now. As Horgan works the count back even. Eight hits for them for him this season. In 13 at-bats, as yeah, that confirms it, that he has not been in many games this season to open up this season. 
2-2 pitch from Robinson also off the plate. 3-2 and two as the count is full. Very good battle here between Horgan and Robinson. Robinson trying to get his ERA here. A strikeout here would dip it below one as it is at one flat right now. Runner at first, the full count offering, swung on and fouled out of play. That one is going to find its way to the field house. Count remains full at three and two with two out here as Horgan was able to catch up to that fastball from Robinson. Cats already off to a better start than they were last night. 3-2 pitch is fouled back again to the screen. Last night they were already down 3-0 at this point in the ball game. So for the score to be nothing, nothing, it's very good given uh, how last night's game panned out. Being at first. Robinson ready to get it again. 3-2 count against Sean Horgan, the designated hitter. Here's the pitch, and it's high for ball four and outside, so Horgan will reach. That puts runners at second and first, and that'll bring up Wayne for the Huskies. Now with a runner in scoring position. Parker Wayne will dig in here. HBU up here this weekend. Not much of a drive for them. About a 70-mile trip up from the Houston area up here to Huntsville. As Wayne digs in, the first pitch is fouled back to the screen. Makes the count 0-1. Robinson doing a very nice job right now. Just the hit by pitch on the walk. Only the second walk allowed by Robinson this season in three starts. This being his fourth, he's got an 0-1 count, runners at second and first, and Robinson will deliver to Wayne as he checked his swing, but is called strike two. So already Wayne behind in the count with an 0-2. Robinson again trying to get out of this inning as the last at-bat, he was up 0-2, and the count was worked back full, ends in a walk. Robinson trying to change that here. Being a sizable lead from second. As Bean is checked by Robinson, the 0-2 pitch. Call the ball. Good waste pitch, though, by Robinson, as that one could have been hacked at. But Wayne, with good discipline, does not take a hack at it. Makes the count one and two. Parker. Parker Wayne batting 250 with runners in scoring position. Bats 444 with two out. And he'll await the one-two pitch from Robinson as Robinson checks the runners and delivers to Wayne as did he check a swing and he did says the first base umpire Jeff Beeman so that'll run the count back even two and two with two out that slider in there just broke a little too much and got down and out of the zone Wayne digging back in with the scoring chance at second is Bina Robinson from the stretch delivers the 2-2 and that one is low and the count is full again back-to-back -back times Back-to-back -back at bat excuse me as Robinson had an 0-2 count and it is worked back full by Huskies hitters Would love to avoid walking the bases loaded here so With Horgan over at first runners go Swing and a miss. Parker Wayne goes down on a striking, swinging fast uh, off-speed pitch there. So they get runners to second and first. They can't do much with it off the hit by pitch and walk. We will be right back on 90.5 KSHU. The Cat, you're listening to Bearcats Baseball live at Don Sander Stadium as we head to the bottom of the second here in Huntsville.
Thank you very much, Krista. Back here at Don Sanders Stadium, heading to the bottom of the second. Bryce Holmes is going to lead off the bottom of the second here against Kyle Gurler. Holmes, very good night defensively last night on a was on the back end of a interesting 1-3-5 double play. As the first pitch to him is outside, 1-0. So Gruller, he's also very good against leadoff hitters. <laughs> hitters against him are 294. So not ideal as Holmes swings at the next pitch. The 188 uh, on the gun makes the count one and one. Gruller kicks and delivers the one one pitch. That is an off speed change up there. One and two as that one is called a strike on the low inside corner. Holmes digging back in the junior. Another 1-2 pitch. Offering is fouled back behind the dish. And the count will remain 1-2 for Bryce Holmes. Holmes digs back in here. The junior transfer from Cisco College waits the 1-2. Off speed called. Strike three is that one frozen there. The hanging curve. From Kyle Gruler, that is his first strikeout of the afternoon. So one out now in the bottom of the second as that brings up Christian Smith, who was batting leadoff last night. Now finds himself in the bottom half of the middle of the order, right before the bottom of the order. Smith this year batting 286 right now, 12 hits. How about eight RBIs? this season so he's been pretty good so far as Gruler is very quick to go here first pitch 88 mile an hour fastball is outside 1-0 and the count with one away Smith trying to get something started here in the bottom of the second for the Bearcats as the 1-0 pitch from Gruler is in there first strike one no <laughs> that looked like a strike from my point but it's called a ball thought the umpire stuck his hand out for a strike but it's 2-0 and instead so a good hitter's count early on for Christian Smith as Gruller kicks and delivers. That one is inside and high. So three quickly. We're at three and O. Oh. Can expect maybe a green light here for Christian Smith as Gruller kicks and delivers that one. That one called a strike. Smith was ready to walk off the plate and head to first. But called a strike on the inside corner makes the count three and one. Gavin Johnson is next as Gruler delivers. That one was too far inside as that is ball four, and that moves Christian Smith over to first. Second walk of the afternoon for Kyle Gruler. And that brings up Gavin Johnson, who didn't start last night. Wes Foles was behind the plate, as I said. Gavin Johnson hailing out of San Antonio, Texas, O'Connor High School, the transfer from New Mexico Junior College. Transferred in last season. And the lefty will face the righty Grueler here with a runner on. First pitch in there for strike one. Change up on the low inside corner. Grueler's got a bit of a slow change up. Ranges from 75 to 78 miles an hour. As Johnson digs back in with an 0-1 count. Runner at first, one away. Hoping to get something started here for the Bearcats. For next pitch is called a strike on the high upper corner of the strike zone there. That fastball flying in there at 88 miles an hour makes the count 0 and 2. Johnson. Not a good count against him as Gruller checks the runner pickoff move. Woo! So he was fast getting that one over to his first baseman, Gonzalez, but Smith gets back in time with no problem. And now Johnson will dig back in here, 0-2. Grueler delivers it. Johnson checks his swing, pitches low, 1-2. and two. So That slider, again, had a little bit too much break to it. Johnson this year not having a good start to his season, batting 152. He's hitting 143 with runners on. Gruller checks Smith and gets ready to deliver the one-two pitch as Smith goes. Swing is a strikeout, and it will not be 
A strike him out, throw him out as Johnson strikes out swinging on that 90 mile an hour fastball. First one I've seen this weekend crack 90, but Smith swipes second, so that moves him into scoring position here for Corbin Vines. I want to correct myself from a moment ago. Corbin Vines was the one that was on the back end of that 1 3 5 double play last night. And he is going to step in here against Grueler with two out and a runner at second, Christian Smith. Grueler delivers the first pitch. That is in there for strike one. Change up coming from Grueler. Grueler's whip, 1.44. Pretty solid for him. Wins, hits, and innings pitched. Uh, for those who don't know what that is, here's the 0-1 pitch to Vines as Vines hits one down the right field line, and that might find, nope, won't find Bowers Boulevard as that one stays in the park, but foul makes the count 0-2. Grueler trying to get out of this inning here and get trying to get around the one-out walk. That one-out walk, Christian Smith is at second. Checks the runner, does Grueler, and delivers, and that one swung, and he'll hit head behind us here. Count remains at 0-2. Vines digs back in. Cat's only got one hit in this game so far. Grueler out of the stretch, checks the runner at second. Moving around is Smith, the 1-2 is hit right back off the hand of Grueler. That might have been slowed down enough for Vines to reach, and he's safe, and that'll make it runners at the corners for the Bearcats with two outs as Vines beats out that one as Kyle Grueler tried to bare hand that pitch, or that hit, excuse me. My goodness, that is a bit dangerous to do. But he looks to be okay as that one was his throwing hand that he tried to glove that, that one with. Couldn't do it, and that puts, as I said, runners at the corners for Anthony McKenzie. The second Baptist High School product, coached under Lance Berkman of Astros fame. And he's got a big opportunity right here to put the Cats on the board with runners at the corners. First pitch is high, 1-0. You know, a walk wouldn't be so bad for the Bearcats either, either as Colton Kowser is on deck. The preseason All-American third team has the pickoff move over there to first as Vines was almost caught napping but gets back in time. I was about to say Kowser, the preseason All-American third team by D1Baseball.com. We love, he would love to get up on a bases-loaded spot, but two outs pickoff move again to try to get Vines. Nothing happening as Gonzalez couldn't slap the tag in time to get Vines. Count remains 1-0 and oh against Anthony McKenzie. Griller delivers the 1-0 as McKenzie lets that one go. As that one, uh, he had almost had to duck out of the way of that one. That was inside. 2-0 and oh now the count. Gotta think, is Grueler, is his hand stinging a little bit from that hit from Vines that was a comebacker up the middle? 2-0 pitch. Swung on and foul. That will get out of play back here. And that'll make the count actually 2-1. and one. As McKenzie couldn't quite catch up to that fastball. Fans hoping for something to cheer for right now with the runners in at the corners at third and first. 2 1 pitch to McKenzie, swung on and missed. 2 and 2, the count with two away. As Grueler blazed that one by him in 89. Outfield playing up, infield playing straight up as well with the Gonzalez holding at first as Grueler steps off the rubber. Kenzie digs back in, hoping to do some damage right here with two away. 2-2 two -two count, and here's the pitch from Gruller. Runners go as that one 
hits McKenzie in the shoulder. So a walk doesn't load the bases. Another hit by pitch loads the bases for Colton Kowser with two out here in the bottom of the second. The sophomore from Cy Ranch High School in Cypress, Texas is looking to do damage right here. Right now he's 0 for 1. Had a fly out on the first pitch of the ball game for the Cats. And now looks to do damage with the bases loaded. Gruller delivers. Kowser swings at the first pitch. Was hoping to put that one on Sycamore. Couldn't, and that makes the count 0-1 on the off-speed pitch from Gruller. Last night, the Cats had trouble with runners on. They left eight on base as a team in the 7-2 loss to the Huskies to open Southland Conference play. The 0-1 pitch by Kowser is just hit into left. That one might be trouble, but may not be for the left fielder, Parker Wayne. So the Cats leave the bases loaded with hit by pitch and a walk that led to the bases being loaded. Kowser just ducks his head in disappointment. So the so Kyle Gruler gets around the bases loaded jam, and that keeps the score nothing nothing as we head to the top of the third. Robinson back on the mound to face the Huskies hitters. Soriano, Talbot, and Franson are due up. We'll be right back on 90.5 KSHU. Sanders Stadium, top of the third, about to get underway here in Huntsville. Robinson ready to go back to work. Very good start for him. Three strikeouts, a walk. His only his second walk of the season, and he will face Nathan Soriano, the shortstop, the nine-hole hitter for the Huskies to lead off the top of the third. Pitch count already at 45 for Robinson, so not good for him in terms of pitch count. First pitch is high for ball one there, the 86-mile-an-hour fastball. Last night mentioned HBU's pitcher Spinney went 129 pitches, so maybe Bearcats may want to try to do that today. I don't know if uh, Coach Jay Sirianni would want to go through that. As that one pitch there went low, 2 0 is the count, and he'll get set to deliver the 2 0. Robinson kicks and delivers that one low so quickly. Soriano's up in the count, 3 and 0, as three straight balls from Robinson. CRA has officially dipped below one. It's at .98 now through two innings. And here's the pitch here. That one is a ball on the low inside corner. So a four-pitch walk to the senior Nathan Soriano. And that will bring it back around to the top of the order, Chase Talbot. So not a good start to the inning for Robinson. Two walks now for him in the game. As, that was one, as those walks are one more than he had coming in. Talbot 0 for 1, struck out to lead off the ball game, hitting 200. It's very good with runners on, batting 333. And the first pitch from Robinson to Talbot is Talbot squares around as that one is fouled back to the screen off the bunt. 0 and 1 will be the count. Talbot trying to make a sacrifice move to get Soriano over. Talbot steps out of the box for a moment. We'll dig back in here to face Dominic Robinson. Robinson checks the runner and delivers. Squaring around again is Talbot, and that is strike two. So I don't know if you want to do that again. As a foul on an 0-2 would make it a strikeout 
So I'm expecting Talbot here to be swinging. Soriano at first. 0 2 count here against Talbot. Nobody out. First, that pitch there. Cold strike three on the low inside corner of the off speed curve. Strikeout number four for Dominic Robinson as Talbot is sent down. And now that'll make it one out here in the top of the third. And as that brings up Franson for HBU. Frank, Trent Franson, the senior from. Lutheran South Academy transferred in from San Jacinto College as a pickoff move over to, by Robinson to try and get Soriano as Soriano just walked back to the bag. Franson, 5'10", 175 pounds. Still waiting the first pitch from Robinson with one out runner on at first first pitch to him as the runner goes it's a hit and run situation going after it was the right fielder Holmes but it gets down in front of him and that with that that makes it runners at the corners for HBU here off the hit by Trent Franson and with only one out in the top of the third third first hit of the ball game for HBU and with that, that'll bring up Johnny Gonzalez, the senior from Frisco. Looking to do some damage here with runners at the corners. So that's really the first big blemish on Robinson's day. Gonzalez takes a few practice swings. As I said, HBU's brought a good crowd out to Don Sanders today. And he'll have the first pitch as Gonzalez looks at strike one. A nice off-speed pitch from Robinson. Needs a big out right here. A double play is still in play. Third baseman playing up. Rest of the first baseman holding the runner at first. It's McKenzie and Davila play straight up here, playing back a little bit for next pitch there to Gonzalez is called strike two as the 85-mile-an-hour fastball found the inside corner. So I was quickly down 0-2 here. As I said, batting 368, very solid this season. Very good with runners in scoring position. Slugging percentage nearing 600. 0 for 1 today. Faced it with an 0-2 count with runners at the corners. And up calls time. HBU looking to do damage right here. On deck is Jackson for HBU. As Robinson delivers that pitch. Oh, framed well by Gavin Johnson, but called a ball one and two on the 86 mile an hour fastball. Oh, it'd be really good for HBU to right here. Couldn't ask for a better opportunity if you're them. One, two pitch. Swung on, off the glove of Robinson. And after that, McKenzie could not glove it as well. So that probably will go down as an error. As the run does score, the runner Robinson scores. That makes it one nothing HBU. Here in the top of the third inning. And still only one out as the runners are now at second and first. Still waiting for the official scoring. That is actually going to be ruled an infield hit for Trent Franson. That brings up the catcher now, Todd Jackson, the four-hole hitter. Batting cleanup today, hoping to do something here as he talks it over with his third base coach. I believe that's Russell Stockton over there in his 10th year at HBU. As Jackson digs in. With runners at second and first. Score one nothing. Robinson is just trying to get out of this jam that he's in and limit the damage to just one. And it looked like for a minute Jackson maybe just showing bunt right here against Jackson as Jackson will be excuse me, Robinson will be pitching out of the stretch. And the pitch. That one's low, one and oh. If you're just joining us, my name is Carlos Zimmerman. I'll be with you for the remainder of 
throughout this game here at Don Sanders Stadium. one nothing to score, HBU. You're catching this game on 90.5 KSHU. Also listen, if you're also uh, on the YouTube channel, Bearcat Sports Network, as they got a video feed going, and we welcome you as well. That, that last pitch is in there for a strike, 85 miles an hour on the gun, as Jack Gavin Johnson wants to talk it over with Robinson here as they take time. Bearcats hitters had a That next pitch in there, that was a one-two pitch as the runners were going on that one and gunning down the th runner going to third was Gavin Johnson. That is now two out in the inning as the hitter Jackson also swung at that pitch. Now makes the count one and two. Two out, here's the pitch, and that one is hit into right field very well, but camping under it is Bryce Holmes, and that will end the inning. So the Huskies get a run across, but get, uh, Dominic Robinson gets through the rest of it. The Bearcats do up in the bottom half of the third inning. Eric Davila, Jack Rogers, and Trent Touche. We'll send it right now back to Krista in the studio here on 90.5 KSHU. Don Sanders Stadium. Score is 1-0 in favor of the HBU Huskies. So they got one run on one hit. Bearcats have nothing on two hits and an error. As Kyle Gruler is ready to get back to work here, he will face the two, three, and four hitters, the heart of the order. For the Bearcats, Eric Davila up at the second spot today, Jack Rogers and Trent Touche. Jack Rogers with that hit he had in the... Uh, when he was up at the plate in the top, in the bottom of the first inning, that hit extends his hitting streak to 12 games. Forgot to point that out to you. So 12-game hitting streak for Jack Rogers as he is in the on-deck circle, as he has just been red hot for the Bearcats as of late. First pitch to Davila is off the plate high, 1-0. Davila was batting nine hole last night. Gets the call to be in the top half of the order today. 1-0 pitch from Gruler. Another ball. 2-0 on that 85-mile-an-hour fastball. The Vila walked on his first plate appearance, so not an official at-bat has been recorded. The 2-0 squares around, holds up, a call to strike. 2-1. Three straight fastballs from Kyle Gruler, so it just... Shows he loves that fastball as uh, he's got a good gun behind him. 2-1 pitch to Davila. Called. Strike two is another one there off the plate. It's called the strike. Makes the count two and two. Ruler digs back in here. Delivers the pitch to Davila as Davila swings and misses that one. Another strikeout for Kyle Gruler. His third of the afternoon. That makes it one out now in the bottom of the second. Excuse me, bottom of the third. And that brings up the red-hot Jack Rogers. 
Batting 404 after that hit he had in the first inning. 6'2", 210 pounds, very tall boy. One of the taller ones on the team, aside from a few pitchers. And Rogers hoping to do damage right here. First pitch is outside for a ball, 1-0. Haven't seen much diversity in Gruler's pitches so far. Here's another pitch to Rogers. That one called a strike as that one found the plate. Off speed that time makes the count one and one. Gruler digging back in, delivers the pitch to Rogers. One one as Rogers hits a rope to second. Diving play by Franson. Rogers tries to beat it out, and he is called. Out there by the first base umpire beam and it looked like Rogers may have had a chance to beat it but doesn't so an excellent play by Franson goes with success to get the out two outs now in the bottom of the third a great play by Franson of HBU Rogers hit that one on a rope Trent Touche will now dig in the four hitter cleanup 0 for 1 today had a ground out that pitch right there looked good, but it's called the ball, 1-0. Oh. Touche, another guy in this lineup hitting well. The only other guy besides Rogers hitting above 300. He's batting 353. The 1-0 oh pitch is called. Strike one. There's the 86-mile-an-hour fastball found the zone. Kyle Gruler making quick work. His pitch count nearing 50. CRA continues to dip as the Cats have not been able to get much against them. And then the 1-1 one -one is fouled back to the screen. Makes the count 1-2. and two. HBU dugout loving what they're seeing so far from their Game 2 starter. Gruler very quick to pitch here. Time is called very late as Gruler was into his windup. I was going to say Gruler's very good about just quickening the game and just getting his pitches down in the same Houston's been not been able to catch up to that here's the one two because that one was not a good pitch as that one bounced before it got to the plate two and two the count now just looking at that incredible play by France in there to get out number two thought Rogers beat it just couldn't do it and that was out too here's the two two pitch here that's fouled back to the screen the at back continues against Trent Touche Bryce Holmes is on deck should the inning continue. Touche. Waits the 2-2, and that is hit well down the left field line. And going after it is the left fielder, and he makes, couldn't make the play. Almost made the play, did Parker Wayne. And he emerges from back there. Looks to be all right as that one just missed. His man, Touche, gave that one a ride, but and Parker Wayne could not make the play. So the at-bat will continue. My goodness, as that one was dipping towards the Chicken Express foul pole. First ball we've seen today really been put out that way down the 330-foot-long third baseline. As Touche was lucky, that one did not get caught down that line. Here's the 2-2 from Gruler, and that one called strike three as Touche was caught looking there. So a 1-2-3 inning for Kyle Gruler as they these Husky pitchers have been dealing last night with Spinney, and Gruler so far today has only given up two hits. We'll head to the top of the fourth. The Huskies of Houston Baptist University lead the Sam Houston State University Bearcats 1-0 as we head to the fourth. Back to Krista in the studio here on 90.5 KSHU.
Thank you very much, Krista. Top of the fourth, about to get underway here at Don Sanders Stadium. You're just joining us. You're listening to 90.5 KSHU Huntsville. Huntsville's only choice for variety in HD. Leading off for HVU will be Brandon Bina. And Dominic Robinson goes back to work here, hoping to keep that lead at 1-0. Lost our run and hits counter there for a moment, but it's back as Bina looks at the first pitch and it's low. 1-0, and oh, a slow fastball coming from Dominic Robinson. Brandon Bina, the senior from Omaha, Nebraska, another out of state player. As Here's the 1-0 from Robinson, and that one is low as uh, Bina checked his swing. It's 2-0. Leading off this inning... Bina not a very good when it when he leads off an inning, hitting 077. As Robinson delivers the 2-0 pitch, and that one is dropped by Johnson. It's going to make the count 3-0. Second time this count has been ever worked to 3-0 by Dominic Robinson. As Bina digs back in. Green light expected. 3-0 pitch, and he'll square around. That one's called the strike. Good fastball in there. As Bina was squaring around, he pulled it back, but it was in there. So Robinson trying to get back in this at-bat against Bina. Next pitch, 3-1. Swing and a miss by Bina. Makes the count full 3-2. Bina's 0-1 for 1 today. Grounded out in a fielder's choice 6-4. And Robinson quickly delivers the 3-2. That one is hit down the left field line, and that is going to be extra bases for Brandon Bina. See, rounds first throw in is going to be cut off, and it is a double for Brandon Bina. Another one of those doubles by the Huskies. And it is one on at second with nobody out here against Dominic Robinson here in the top of the fourth inning. It's the first double of the afternoon for HBU. If I recall correctly, they already had three at this point in the ballgame last night. So in terms of doubles, they're doing the Cats are doing a good job, but not what you want to lead off an inning, a guy who doesn't even hit well when leading off an inning. And here is Cal Clark, who's 0 for 1, struck out when, it, when in his first plate appearance. He is really good against pitchers with runners in scoring position, hitting 400. And the first pitch from Robinson, and he delivers. Squaring around is... Clark and it fouls off 0 and 1. So he's trying to get the runner over to third. It was a good bunt, but it just squeaked foul. Very tough to bunt also on off speed pitches as well. Fastball, that could have been right back to Robinson, and they could have gotten the runner down. Bina at third, so he's lucky that one went foul. Clark batting 320 this season. Awaits the 0-1 pitch from Dominic Robinson so far today. He's given up two hits and one earned run. Hoping to limit that. 0-1 is as he squared around again, did Clark, but that one's called the ball, so the count will go even at 1-1. One and one. First baseman Smith playing just short on the infield grass, trying to glove anything that heads his way as they're expecting that bunt. In outfield playing in a bit. 1-1 one, one pitch coming from Dominic Robinson to Cal Clark. Here it is. Squaring around is Clark again as that one gets down. That one took a bad bounce and rolled foul. Very lucky that that one rolled foul off the bat of Cal Clark as that one hit the transition from dirt to grass or grassy turf, if you will. And a lucky break as that one was a really good bunt laid down by Cal Clark. Is that he well would have been on, and the runners would have been at the corners with nobody out. So now with a count at one and two, you, I don't know if you're uh, Coach Jared Moon and you want to continue to bunt here, I wouldn't think they would with the count one and two. Moon in his 15th year as manager of the Huskies baseball team. Here's the one, two. Called strike three on the inside corner there. 73 mile an hour curver. And that gets Cal Clark. Strikeout number five for Dominic Robinson today through three and a third. That will bring up Sean Horgan, the left handed hitter. The runner remains at second. So big out number one for Dominic Robinson here in the top of the fourth. 
Horgan, not an official at bat so far, was walked the first time he was faced by Robinson. And here is the pitch from Robinson as he checks the runner, and here it is. Called strike one on the upper outside corner. Makes the count 0 and 1 with one away. Overcast skies loom over Don Sanders today. Temperatures mild. Good day for baseball. 0 1 pitch is swung on and fouled back behind the fans. Makes the count 0 and 2. Was the pitch there it was an off speed curveball. Be big for Robinson to get out number two right here against Horgan to work around the leadoff double by Brandon Bina. Horgan, a freshman out of Katy, Texas, Taylor High School, awaiting the 0-2 pitch from Robinson. Here it is. And he held up there on the waist pitch there from Robinson. One and two is the count. Robinson doing very well so far today through three and a third. It's got five strikeouts. His pitch count up over 70 now. So you got to think they got to be thinking about that in the Bearcat bullpen as that pitch count continues to climb. Only one run given up by Robinson in the one-two pitch to Horgan is fouled down the left field line over the field house. Bearcat baseball not the only thing going on today. Both Sam Houston basketball teams are out at SFA today in the final game of Southland Conference play before the season, the conference tournament begins. We'll give you updates on that throughout the broadcast should the game still be continuing on. As Horgan awaits the one-two pitch from Robinson. Swing and a miss. Another strikeout for Dominic Robinson. His sixth of the afternoon, and it's two big outs back-to-back -back for him. Now makes it two out with the runner at second. That brings up Parker Wayne. Who's 0 for 1 today? Robinson doing a really good job trying to work around the leadoff double by Brandon Bina. And Robinson waiting to deliver the first pitch there with the runner. A sizable lead at second is Bina. And the first pitch to Wayne Swing and a miss. 0 and 1. 80 mile an hour changeup coming in there from Robinson. As I said, Sam Houston State basketball, they kick off 4.30 in the afternoon out at William R. Johnson Coliseum in Nacogdoches. Hoping to end the season on a high note. The 0-1 pitch to, from Robinson is hit into the corner in right field. Diving catch by Bryce Holmes for out number three. What a play by the right fielder Holmes to get the Bearcats out of that jam. What a play by the young right fielder. What a just unbelievable. I thought that was getting down, and Holmes changes me on that one. What a play off the hit by Parker Wayne. So with that, the Huskies only get a runner to second off the leadoff double, and the Bearcats work around it. Going to the bottom of the fourth, due up for the Bearcats' Bryce Holmes, the guy who made just, just made that play, Christian Smith and Gavin Johnson. We'll be right back on 90.5 KSHU. You're listening to Bearcat Baseball. Welcome back to Don Sanders Stadium. What a way to end that top of the fourth was Bryce Holmes, and he will be up to face Kyle Gruller here in the bottom of the fourth, trying to do damage with his bat just like he did with his glove. And he'll face the first pitch from Gruller, and it is called a ball on the outside corner, 1-0 and on that 86-mile-an-hour fastball. Oh. 
Holmes sending back in. Grueler, very quick pitch, 1-0, and that one's also outside, this time low, but makes the count 2-0. It's been a thing with Grueler today. He re usually starts pretty bad off in, early on in the at-bat, but seems to work his way back. Here's the 2-0. That one's high, 3-0 as Holmes looking to get a pitch he can take a hack at here, but Grueler not letting it happen. Maybe Grueler knowing the momentum he has after that play he made in right. Here's the 3-0. That one is high. Ball four. P a four-pitch walk. Gets Holmes at first. My goodness, that one looks pretty good, that last one there. But the home plate umpire, Alex Ziegler, says no. And that will bring up Christian Smith with a runner on at first. Nobody out. This. Junior from El Paso, Texas. Christian Smith looking to do damage with his bat right now. First pitch from Grueler. Outside, 1-0, oh, so that's five straight balls from him. His pitch count nearing 60. Like I said earlier, he does very good with runners on, and that's been proven today. The bases were loaded at one point. He worked out of it, hoping to work around that first pitch. Pitch walk, first four pitch walk, and that's another ball in there that was low two and zero. As Grueler's looking to, he's struggling with his command right now against Christian Smith. Pickoff move over to try and get Holmes napping doesn't work. Count remains two zero with nobody out. As Holmes has a very side, decent lead. Two a pitch as Smith squares around. That one called a strike. That looked like it was in the same spot as that as that four pitch walk. And the umpire chirping over at the third base coach over there of the Bearcats. There's a lot of people in that crowd did not like that call. So the count is two and one, regardless of whatever the crowd wants to say. And Gruler will dig back in. Here's the 2 1 pitch to Smith. Swung on and fouled over that one. Actually, this one might reach Bowers, and it will, as that will make the count 2 and 2. Smith was down 2 0 at one point, and now is. Excuse me, he's down 2 2 now in an even count. Gruler trying to work out of that earlier troubles as the pickoff move over to try and get Holmes does not work again. Holmes very speedy over there at third, or at first, excuse me. Smith batting 286 this season, hoping to do damage right here. Runner goes, and that one is hit high in the air to left center. Back at the wall, it is caught out there by Wayne. As, man, Christian Smith gave that one a ride out to left center, but Wayne right back there on it. As Holmes was running on that pitch, the hit and run was on, but it is a loud out number one for the Bearcats. So that one was heading for the scoreboard, and it just died out there near the warning track. With that, that brings up Gavin Johnson, the senior, who's batting 147 this year. Not a good start for him. One of the premier hitters was on lists at, in the preseason pickoff move to try to get Holmes again. Doesn't work. As Johnson still awaits his first pitch. I was about to say, he's been on preseason lists. It's not the start he's been looking for. Only five hits through nearly 15 games. Pickoff move to try to get Holmes again. That one was a bit closer, but called safe is Holmes. And Johnson's still waiting for a first pitch. Score is 1-0. One out in the bottom of the fourth inning here at Don Sanders. Here's the first pitch to Johnson, and that one is called strike one on an 87-mile-an-hour fastball that found the zone. 0-1. Johnson digs back in here. First time this inning that Kyle Gruler has been ahead in the count. Had a four-pitch walk to open the inning, and here's the 0-1 to Gavin. That one bounces in, and that one got away from the catcher, and Holmes will steal second on the, what I believe will go down as a wild pitch or an error by the catcher. So that one bounced in there. That's going to go as a wild pitch, and the runner, Bryce Holmes, moves into scoring position at second. So one and one is the count with one away. That takes away the double play threat. 
and Gruller trying to get his command back together here. The 1-1 one -one pitch is low, 2-1. He has only been able to get across three strikes in this inning compared to eight balls. Not what you're looking for if you're Houston Baptist. His pitch count over 60 now. Nothing happening in either bullpen. Still early on in this game. Approaching the midway point. Gruler with Holmes at second. Delivers the 2-1. Fouled back to the screen did Gavin Johnson. Makes the count even at 2-2 two two as he could not catch up to that 84 mile an hour fastball. Takes his time here. Trying to collect himself. Trying to get that as the tying run is at second. He represents the go-ahead run. Does Gavin Johnson. 2-2 two -two pitch as Gruller from the stretch. Taking his time this time. Not like him to do that and checks the runner delivers the 2-2 as that one's high that runs the count full with one out that pitch just slowly worked its way in there but found the top did not find the top of the zone running the count full on deck is Corbin Vines for the Bearcats and Griller checks the runner 3-2 is hit well by Gavin Johnson out the left field. Going back is Wayne again. Very good play. Man, they're keeping him busy out there as he makes the catch. Tagging is Bryce Holmes, and that'll move him over to third. My goodness. Gavin Johnson holds his head in, in disappointment as he got a hold of that one as Wayne had to find a lot of ground to make up that. And Johnson goes back to the dugout, not happy with himself as, man, he gave that one a ride. So two loud outs in this inning as Vines will step up to the plate. The junior transfer from Waller High School in Hempstead transferred out of from Gal Galveston College. Man, oh man, two solid hits by Bearcat hitting. They just could not get out of here. First pitch to Vines is in for a ball, 1-0. Bearcats have done a good job of getting Holmes around closer and closer to home. It's just he's at third. They need that tying run to just lessen any potential damage HBU could come up with. Here's the 1-0. That one's high again. 2-0. And, and uh, as Kyle Griller wants a new ball from home plane umpire Ziegler. Anthony McKenzie is on deck should the inning continue. And a 2-0 count now against Corbin Vines for Kyle Gurler. Two-zero pitch in there for strike one. So that runs the count to two and one as Gurler tries to work his way back into this at bat against Corbin Vines. Here's the 2-1 from Gruller. Swung on and hit in the left and the right center. That ball's going to get down between the right fielder and center fielder. Scoring is Bryce Holmes, and we have a tie ball game. And Don Sanders on the RBI hit by Corbin Vines. Score 1-1 one one now. Third hit of the ball game for the Cats. And that will bring up Anthony McKenzie as, that, as Vines does his job to tie the game and bring Holmes home. Score 1-1. One one. Wow, what a hit off the bat of Corbin Vines. And the inning will continue with two out. Griller will try to collect himself. He'll face Anthony McKenzie, the nine-hole hitter for the Bearcats. Good lead for Vines off of first. And Griller delivers. Vines goes. Throw down is in time to get Corbin Vines. So as soon as Vines tied the game at one, he's trying to steal second to get into scoring position. Thought he beat the throw. An excellent throw from Todd Jackson. Limits the damage to one. We have a tie ball game. Bottom of the fourth inning. Score to one to one. We'll go to the top of the fifth as Cor uh, Dominic Robinson will get back to work here at Don Sanders. We'll be right back on 90.5 KSHU.
here at Don Sander Stadium. We got a tie ball game, folks. If you're just joining us, my name's Carlos Zimmerman here on 90.5 KSHU. Also on the Bearcat Sports Network, if you're tuning in there, we'd like to welcome you in if you just joined us in a great ball game right now. Compared to last night, when uh, the Bearcats were down 4 nothing at this point in the ballgame, it's only 1-1, one one, a very good pitching battle between Dominic Robinson and Kyle Gruller. Robinson trying to continue his good ways. He's gone four innings, two hits, six Ks. He'll face Nathan Soriano here, who looks at strike one. Soriano, another out-of-state player, the senior from Tucson, Arizona. Awaits the 0 1 from Robinson. Swing and a miss 0 in 2 as he's quickly down 0 2. Robinson trying to make quick work here of Soriano, the 9 hole hitter for the Huskies. 0 2 pitch. Swing and a miss. Another strikeout for Dominic Robinson. His seventh of the afternoon. And now that with that, excuse me, my goodness, could not get my words out there. That makes it one out in the top of the fifth inning, and he'll face the leadoff hitter, Chase Talbot. Robinson's ERA continues to dip. Again, after the allowing the run, it's now at 1-3-1. Talbot lates the first pitch, and that's a strike. Four straight strikes from Dominic Robinson compared to Grueler, who had 10 balls thrown in that last inning. And that's the reason why we're tied at 1. 0-1 oh, pitch to Talbot. Did he hold up there? He didn't. 0-2. Oh, so back to back at bats where Robinson gets the count to 0-2. Oh, Talbot's 0 for 2 today with two strikeouts. And here's the 0-2 from Robinson. That one's fouled right behind us. That might hit the roof. It did. And it is now, well, the count will remain at 0 and 2 with nobody out. Excuse me, with one out, nobody on. Third baseman, Vines playing close. Rest of the team playing straight up. Davila in short right, 0-2 pitch. Off the plate, good waste pitch by Robinson. Makes the count one and two. 88 mile an hour fastball on the gun there. The count at one, two, as I said. Robinson trying to get another strike out here. Here's the one, two. He got him swinging there. Talbot down on strikes there. Eight strikeouts for Robinson. Now with two out in the inning, that is, I believe, three straight for Robinson, dating back to the bottom, uh, the top of the fourth inning. Robinson dealing here today at Don Sanders. He'll now face Trent Franson, the senior for the Huskies, digging in now with two out as Robinson's dealing. Here's the first pitch to Franson, and that one's called a strike. Robinson finding the zone here in the top of the fifth on an 81 mile an hour changeup. Here's the 0-1 pitch from Robinson. That one swung on and hit into center. Over to get it will be Holmes. And it is a 1-2-3 inning for Dominic Robinson. Two punch outs and a fly out. Robinson dealing here at Don Sanders. We quickly go to the bottom of the fifth inning tie ball game here. 1-1 one one is your score. We'll be right back on 90.5 KSHU. Thank you very much, Krista. Back here at Don Sanders Stadium in a tie ball game. Bottom of the fifth. One to one is your score. Bearcats looking to get back to work here on offense here against Kyle Gruler, who's into his fifth inning of work. Whose stat line, 
not too bad. Four innings, three hits, an earned run, three walks, four Ks. He's limited the damage to just one, and the Bearcats had the bases loaded at one point in the game. And so that'll keep Anthony McKenzie at the plate as Corbin Vines was caught stealing to end the inning, last inning. So McKenzie gets a fresh count and a fresh start here to lead off the bottom of the fifth inning. First pitch is inside, 1-0 and from Gruler. McKenzie batting 173. Hasn't recorded an official at-bat, was hit by pitch in his first plate appearance in the bottom of the second. The 1-0 from Gruler is low, 2-0. Gruler struggling with his command as he's got two straight balls to lead off the bottom of the fifth. He had a four-pitch walk last inning. Just missing his spots here. Getting the signs from Jackson. 2-0. Is low again. 3-0. Starting to look like what it was in the last inning from Gruler. My goodness. McKenzie would love nothing more than to get a four-pitch walk. And that is not what he'll get as that one is in there for a strike on the inside corner. So the count moves to 3-1. And here's the 3-1. That is hit by McKenzie. That will run the count full as that one's going to get out of play foul. This is what you want, though, if you're the Bearcats. Run the starting pitcher out of the game by running his pitch count up. That's what they thought they were doing last night with Spinney, who threw 129. That wasn't the case. He went eight innings almost as that one is hit on the ground to the shortstop Soriano. Throw on to first, and that'll be out number one for the Huskies here in the bottom of the fifth. That will bring up the leadoff hitter, Colton Kowser, who is 0 for 2 today. Kowser looking to maybe do damage here with his bat. A, le a righty on left against lefty here. Said 0 for 2. Two fly outs today. One in the first, one in the second. So he's been able to put the ball in play and in the air. He's hoping to make damage right here with one away here in the bottom of the fifth in a tie ball game, one to one. And he'll square around for a moment and the pitch is called the ball. One and oh. It's not like the home plate umpire Alex Ziegler's zone is a little bit too tight. It's been close a couple times, but Gruler's just missing his spots. 1-0 pitch to Kowser is hung on and popped up on the infield. Over to get it is Soriano's. That ball found it. The outfield, actually. Excuse me. Yeah, Soriano made that play. And that is out number two in the inning. And that brings up Eric Davila. So like the, the top of the fifth, good work here from Kyle Grueler in comparison to Dominic Robinson to make some quick outs here. Now with two out to face Davila, who's 0 for 1 today, walk and a strikeout. First pitch to him is a ball, 1 and 0. That is three straight at-bats where he has started the at-bat with a ball. Not getting the calls he wants, missing his spots. 1-0 pitch to Davila. That one's in there for a strike, evens the count at 1 and 1. Griller. Trying to work out of this inning here. Trying to get a 1-2-3 inning. And here's the next pitch to Davila. That one's in there for a strike. And for the first time this inning, he gets ahead in the count. It's 1-2. and two. And a 79-mile-an-hour changeup that found the corner. Gruller taking his time here. The 1-2 to Davila is a high-hanging curve that found nothing but the outside part of the plate. It's 2-2. Two and two. Jack Rogers is on deck should the inning continue, who's one for two today. And here's the 2-2 from Grueler. He delivers. That one's outside, and that runs the count full. Grueler a little bit upset with himself as he's allowed this to run full. A couple off-speed pitches have allowed that. As he's struggling to find the zone with any of his pitches. Here's the full count offering, and Davila just fouled that one off. Thought he swung and missed it, but just got a piece of it to keep the at-bat alive. Seventh pitch of the at-bat coming up here. This is pitch count for Kyle Gruller is up over 80 now here in the fifth, and here's the pitch to Davila, and it's a walk. The inning will continue as Rodgers will get on to hit. And Davila works out a walk after being down 1-2 at one point. So it's one on. 
two out for Rodgers. As I said, he's over. He's one for two today with a single in the first, the ground out in the third. Does very well with two out with runners on. His slugging percentage is up over 700. He's done very well so far this season. The hot hitter who's now on a 12-game hitting streak with his hit in the first. First pitch. It's going to find its way to the backstop, and that is going to move Davila into scoring position. I believe that might go down as a passed ball. As a Todd Jackson could not even glove it. And I believe that's what they'll rule it. Rodgers will now dig back in with a 1-0 count and a runner now in scoring position at second in Davila. Out of the stretch, Grueler. Taking his time, ready to deliver to Jack Rogers here. Checks the runner to Vila, and he'll step off. Doesn't make a move to pick off as Soriano was getting over there to make the play. It's a very tough pickoff move to make for a pitcher going to second. And he'll check the Vila again, and he'll deliver the 1-0 to Rogers, who looks at strike one. Off speeder there for him. 73 on the gun from Grueler. Froze Rogers. Couldn't do anything with that. The count is even. Trent Touche on deck. Should the inning continue? Grueler in his fifth inning of work trying to get out of this. Here's the 1-1. One, one. Rogers swung hard at that one but missed it. 1-2. Grueler. Hoping to work with his last strike here against Rodgers. And send this one to the sixth. Griller delivers the one-two. It is a ball. Evens the count of two. The HBU fans in attendance didn't like that one. That one was very close. I thought it was on the black. Wasn't called. Two-two is the count. Rogers looking for hit number 20 on the season right here. With two out and a runner at second, Davila. Here it is, 2-2. Two -two. Swing and a miss. Rogers goes down, swinging there. That is strikeout number five for Gruler as he gets around the walk by Davila. And we'll go to the top of the six. We are still tied at one apiece. Pretty even matchup as Robinson heads back out for his sixth inning of work here on 90.5 KSHU. You're listening to a presentation of Bearcats Baseball. Don Sanders here in beautiful Huntsville, Texas. Don Sanders, the crown jewel of the Southland Conference. we got a good one going for you this afternoon, folks. The score is 1-1 one one between the Houston Baptist Huskies and the Sam Houston State Bears. That's Dominic Robinson back out there for his sixth inning of work, having a great afternoon, in, including eight strikeouts. He's had two strikeouts in each of the last two innings, hoping to replicate that. He'll face the heart of the order, though, of the Huskies. Johnny Gonzalez, Todd Jackson, and Brandon Bina. So far today, Bina the only one to get a hit off of Robinson. As them combined is one for five. Gonzalez, he's 0 for 2, has a fly out and a fielder's choice with an RBI. And Gonzalez hits a screamer down the line foul. Makes the count 0 and 1. Robinson trying to continue his good fortune. Five innings pitch, two hits, eight strikeouts, only a double given up. His pitch count steadily approaching 100. Next pitch there is a strike. 0-2, oh good pitch from Robinson. Robinson. 
Gonzalez. The 0-2 is coming here against Gonzalez. Here it is. Swing and a miss. Another strikeout for Dominic Robinson. His ninth of the afternoon. And that makes it one out here in the top of the sixth inning. Robinson just straight up dealing here in the middle portion of this ball game. Only the one earned run given up, so he is off to an excellent start in this game. Here is Todd Jackson, who looks at a ball, a 1-0, and as that one got up there a little off-speed from Robinson. Quickly back and ready to go. Here's the 1-0 to Jackson. That one missed as well, 2-0. Little bit, been a little bit of time since we've seen him get behind in the count. Robinson trying to get back in it here against Todd Jackson, who's 0 for 1 today. Hit by pitch and flied out. His two plate appearances. Wow, that one's off the plate. 3 0. Not good for Robinson. Expect the green light here. The green light situation. 3 0 pitch. That one found the zone. Three and one there on the gun. So Robinson trying to get back in it here, and he has a chance here. Three one. That one's low. So Todd Jackson reaches on a five pitch walk, and that will bring up Brandon Bina, who's one for two today. Though one of only two Huskies that are in the hit column, him and Trent Franson. The senior will step in with a runner on at first base, Jackson. Infield and outfield playing straight up. Smith holding the runner, Jackson, at first. And the first pitch from Robinson to Brandon Bina. Here it is. That one's off the plate and high, 1-0. Having a little bit of trouble out there with the miles per hour counter. It's not really picking up his pitch as well. We're unable to tell you how fast it's going. That last pitch was a fastball that missed. Runner at first. As Robinson checks the runner, here's the 1-0. Swing, and I missed that one in for a strike one and one. Great pitch there from Robinson. A fastball that Brandon Bina could not catch up to. Bina settles back in. Clark on deck with, with the runner on. An opportunity here for the Huskies. 1-1 one, one pitch. Just missed inside. 2-1 as that 183 miles an hour on the gun. Three straight fastballs from Robinson. Only one of them finding the zone, and Brandon, Brandon Bina couldn't catch up to it. Jackson, a sizable lead. Crowd here at Don Sanders hoping for something to cheer about on the HBU side. With a count two and one, Robinson checks the runner, Jackson, and delivers. Swung on, and that is going to also find the roof. Oh, it didn't that time. But makes the count two and two. And Robinson looking for strikeout number 10 right here against Bina. A guy who had, an inc like I said earlier, an cr incredible night last night against Tyler Davis and the other... Bearcat pitcher is going three of five with two RBIs for himself in that 7-2 win. Here's the 2-2 offering from Dominic Robinson. That one's high and that runs the count full. With one out, wouldn't expect the runner Jackson to go. And again, you'd be surprised what Jared Moon, the manager of the Huskies, would do in a situation like this. Here's the 3-2 from Robinson. Swung on and hit down the line off the bag and took a carom that Vines couldn't play. That ball is ruled fair as when the ball does hit the bag, it's fair. So with that, it's runners at second and first for the Huskies with only one away. And that will bring up Clark. <laughs> Cal Clark today, he's 0 for 2 with two strikeouts. Much like Talbot, who's at the top of the order. And 
we'll have a mound visit here from head coach Jay Sirianni. We'll take a quick 30 second break. We'll be right back on 90.5 KSHU. here after that mound visit. No pitching change was made. Robinson will continue to go to work up over 100 pitches now as he faces Ch Cal Clark, excuse me, with runners at second and first with one away. And here's the first pitch to Clark in there for strike one. Definitely a good thing you want if you're Dominic Robinson to get up in the count early. Double play depth for the infield. Maybe make something happen, Bina. Not a lot of speed over there at first, so that's definitely in order on any ground ball. The 0-1. Swung on and missed. 0-2 now to Cal Clark. With an 80-mile-an-hour changeup that got him out in front. Due up for Sam Houston in the bottom of the sixth inning is Trent Touche, Bryce Holmes, and Christian Smith. In the tie ball game, 1-1, three hits to both teams. An 0-2 count here on Cal Clark. Robinson delivers. Swing and a miss. Strikeout number 10 for Dominic Robinson. What a day he's having on the mound today for the Bearcats. And he'll face Sean Horgan here now. With That's a big out number two with runner in scoring position at second. That being the go-ahead runner, Jackson. Oh boy, very good job by Dominic Robinson to work it up to two outs and now flirting with a third out to get out of another jam as he faces Horgan. Checks the runner at second and delivers the pitch and it is just off the plate outside, 1-0. Horgan 0 for 1 today, had a walk, only reached first in the top of the second inning, had a strikeout in the fourth, one of those ten from Robinson. Robinson very good with with uh, two outs working in his favor. Here's the 1-0 to Horgan and swing and a miss. 1-1 one one on a pitch that was outside. Horgan tried to catch up to that one and couldn't. Count now even at 1-1. One one. Eric Davila playing in shallow right on any ball that's hit that direction as the shift is on for the Bearcats. And the 1-1 one, one pitch from Robinson. He kicks and delivers. That one's outside. 2-1. and one. So that one could not find the plate. Oregon looking for his first RBI of the season. The young freshman from Katy. Now working with a count that works in his favor. 2-1 count. Robinson will kick and deliver here. Hoping to get out of the inning right here. That one's going to go to the backstop as the catcher Johnson couldn't glove that, and that advances the runners to third and second, taking the force off of any base. And the count now three and one. Not good for Robinson. You walk him, you walk him. Loaded to Parker Wayne, who's been very busy on the defensive side out in left field. A couple balls that have head out to him. He had two last inning, two loud outs. Robinson... Looking to not even let him come to the plate. With a 3-1 count for the freshman Horgan. Runners at third and second off the wild pitch, and he delivers the 3-1, and it is off the plate. He does load the bases for Parker Wayne. So Robinson, who got it up to two outs with a strikeout, wasn't able to make it happen as the bases are loaded and 
and it looks like we are going to have a pitching change now. That is it for Dominic Robinson. What a performance for that young man, though. Ten strikeouts this afternoon. He will leave the game with the bases loaded. New pitcher coming on for the Bearcats. We'll tell you all about him when we come back from this break here on 90.5 KSHU The Cat. Welcome back to Don Sanders Stadium. Carlos Zimmerman here on this overcast afternoon in Huntsville. New pitcher for the Bearcats. That's Garrett Egley, the junior transfer from Midland College who hails out of San Antonio, Texas as he comes in relief in a big spot where the bases are loaded for HBU with two out. Very interesting move by Jay Sirianni to make a move to the bullpen at this point in the game, but with the pitch count very high for Dominic Robinson, as I said, who had a great game today. Ten strikeouts through five and two-thirds innings, responsible for all three runners on. Egley looking to get the Bearcats out of this jam. Egley this season, his ERA sits at 1.69, a whip at 2.20. Runners, hitters against him with two out, they hit decently, 300. With runners on, they hit 267. Hasn't recorded an official win or loss just yet. He's only pitched five and a third innings this season. Six hits, an earned run, five walks, four Ks. So it's not ideal, but he's just being called upon here to get this big out here and then possibly go and work the seventh. It's the bullpen over there. To our left is quiet. Same with the HBU bullpen. So it looks like Gruller will come out in the bottom of the sixth inning to work his sixth inning of work. So Jackson's at third. Brandon Bina is at second. Sean Horgan at first. And Parker Wayne at the plate to face Garrett Egley. Egley just needs one out here. Shortstop and second baseman playing up in shallow left center and right center respectively. Egley first pitch to Parker Wayne with them juiced. And it's in there for a strike. Couldn't ask for a better start to the at-bat for Egley. The count's 0-1. It's that one he lasered in there at 80. Stares in, gets the sign from Johnson. Gets the sign he wants. And he'll kick and deliver out of the stretch. And that one is swung on and fouled back. So that runs the count 0-2. Parker Wayne trying to put something in play here and possibly to give HBU the lead back. They had a score in the top of the third. The Bearcats tied it in the bottom of the fourth. With some good hitting. Very even matchup this afternoon in Huntsville. 0 2 count, two out, bases loaded for Garrett Egley, and the pitch to Wayne is low. What a block! by Gavin Johnson to prevent that ball from heading to the backstop and allowing the runner from third, Todd Jackson, to score. So that runs the count to one and two for Parker Wayne, hitting 257, who's 0 for 2 today with a strikeout and a flyout. Egley gets the sign and delivers the one, two, bases loaded pitch. Here it is, chopped. Umpire gets out of the way, and the throw to first is in time to get him. What a throw by McKenzie. He thought about getting the out at second, but gets the one at first. So Garrett Egley does his job. He gets around, out the bases loaded jam, preserves Dominic Robinson's stat line for the day, and we will go to the bottom of the six in a tie ball game, 1-1, and the Bearcats to Shea, Holmes, and Smith do up when we come back on 90.5 KSHU.
at Don Sander Stadium. Quite the ball game going for you this afternoon. First day of spring break for Sam Houston students. Kyle Griller back on the mound to work his sixth inning of work against his Bearcat hitting squad. The team, as a whole, the team's hitting three of 16, batting 188. Four walks, five strikeouts, no extra base hits. They're three of nine with runners on, two of six with runners in scoring position. Huskies not doing as well. Three for 21, hitting 143. They've struck out, been struck out 10 times. All of those credit to Dominic Robinson. Four walks, one extra base hit compared to the seven that they had last night. They have been struggling with runners in scoring position today. They're 0 for 8. So that's the good news for the Bearcats this afternoon, that the hitting is not as firing as it was yesterday. Going out to the bullpen right now is Steven Beard for the Bearcats. You may be expecting him in the top of the seventh. Husky bullpen looks to be quiet as Gruler will dig in and face to Shea to lead off the top of the the bottom of the sixth inning and he looks at a ball there on the first pitch. One and oh is the count to start off against the designated hitter to Shea. Next pitch there, swung on and missed by Touche, one and one. Touche today, 0 for 2, the ground out in the first, and a strikeout in the third. He was caught looking at that one. Grueler digs in, 1-1 one, one pitch. That one's low, 2-1. and one. So That pitch couldn't find the zone. Grueler possibly showing signs of fatigue as his pitch count is not quite to 100, but... We know what they do with those Husky uh, pitchers. They do run pitch counts up. 2-1 pitch. That's inside. Backs Duche off the plate a little bit. 3-1. and one. Gruler trying to get his... He get his uh, just get back, get it together. Three one is hit hard by Touche, but right to the shortstop Soriano throw on the first for out number one, and that will be the case. So one out now in the bottom of the sixth. That will bring up Bryce Holmes, who had an incredible catch in right field earlier on in the game. Bryce Holmes, the trying to find his name here, the transfer from Cisco College out of Dallardsville, Texas, Big Sandy High School. The junior looking to maybe get something going here for the Bearcats as the number two hitter in the inning, batting fifth in the lineup. First pitch from Grueler is in there for strike one. That one found the zone there. That one has been called both ways as a ball and a strike. 86 on the gun from Grueler, but regardless, it's an 0-1 count with one away. Next one is swung on by Holmes. Gloved at third by Clark and throw on the first, and that's another quick out. So now that's two down here in the bottom of the six. Grueler doing good work here against the Bearcat hitting squad, and that brings up Christian Smith, who's 0 for 1 today. Out of El Paso. Trying to maybe do something here, but Kyle Grueler looks to be zoning in now. After a struggling fifth, he got out of all the jams he was in there. Here's the first pitch to Smith. That one is off the plate, 1-0. and Another time that the pitch count, the pitch count high and the... That's another ball. That's 2-0. Oh. What I was trying to say is uh, he starts the at-bat with a ball. He has not been locating his pitches very well, trying to get the signs from Jackson. The two out. 2-0 two oh pitch is fouled. Thank goodness for the net because that's going right towards our box here. Makes the count 2-1 and one off the foul hit by Christian Smith. Griller digs in. Here's the 2-1 to Smith. That one, wow. That looked pretty good from my perspective, but the ump says no. That is a ball. 3-1. and one. A good break for Trent Touche. Not so good for Gruler. Here's the 3-1. Swung on and gets past the glove of Gruler, but gloved over at second by Franson. And it is a 1-2-3 inning for Kyle Gruler of the HBU Huskies. Cats go quiet in the bottom of the sixth. We'll go to the top of the seventh. May have a new pitcher. We'll see if Egley comes back out. You'll find out on the other side of this break on 90.5 KSHU.
of the seventh, about to get underway. Garrett Egley back out onto the mound for his uh, first full inning of work, it appears, as he was called upon in the last inning in relief of Dominic Robinson. As he was called upon to get the third out, which he did with a bases loaded jam behind him. So good composure from Garrett Egley, the junior right-hander. He'll face Nathan Soriano, Chase Talbot, and Trent Franson here in the uh, excuse me top of the seventh inning. And uh, taking his time here as he's getting some warm-up pitches in to get fully warmed up. And now he's ready to go, and he'll face the 9-1-2. and two. First, the 9-hitter, Nathan Soriano. Sun, even though we can't see it, slowly going to be going down here shortly. As the lights are on here at Don Sanders. A good day for baseball as we're into the back half of the ball game. Seventh, eighth, and ninth innings coming up. Egley will start this inning with a fly ball that goes foul and out of play makes the count 0 oh and 1. Holmes gave it a look. Excuse me, Smith gave it a look. Didn't attempt to make a play. So the count's 0 and 1 here for Soriano. Egley out of the stretch will deliver the 0 1. That one, call the ball, one and one. Gavin Johnson framed that one pretty well on the 85 mile an hour fastball, but couldn't get the call and it'll even the count. Egley stares back in, gets the sign he wants, and he, he's got it. And here is the one one pitch. In there, strike two. Runs the count to one and two. Egley trying to get some work going here. Soriano trying to maybe do some damage to lead off the inning for the Huskies in a tie ball game. One to one is your score. Three hits for both teams. Sam Houston has an error. Swung on. That one is going to get through in the left field for a base hit for Nathan Soriano. So that one splits the infield. So the Huskies have a runner on. First hit they've had in quite a bit. And that will be that will bring up Chase Talbot, who hopes to do... A little bit more for the Huskies here. As Egley looks to try and compose himself here. Double play depth for the infield. Third baseman playing close. Smith holds the runner, Soriano. First pitch. Talbot squared around. That one's going to get to the backstop. That'll take the double play depth away. And thought about going to third was Soriano, but he holds up. He may have been actually able to make that, so he'll reach on the wild pitch from Egley. Bearcats got some action going in their bullpen. HBU bullpen looks quiet for right now. There was a little bit of action going on there earlier as Gavin Johnson goes out to talk with Egley. But so you got to think that the Bearcats may be thinking about maybe going to someone else here in a moment if this gets out of hand for Garrett. Here, and as I said, he's not ideal. He's only given up one earned run, but he's walked five, only struck out four in the five and two innings pitched. He's worked in relief. He's given up seven hits as well. That one was his seventh that he gave up to Soriano. 1-0 to Talbot as he squares around and couldn't get that one out in front of the plate. It's 1-1 one one off the foul. Or maybe it's a... Okay. No, I think the scoreboard operator didn't have that one right. It's one and one. Yep, umpire si Alex Ziegler signals that, and now they got it right. Egley with the count even. Runner at second. Soriano delivers. Talbot gets that one down. Throw to third. Got him over at third. Great awareness from Garrett Egley as he guns down the runner going to third. That'll make it that the first out here in the top of the seventh as Talbot will reach for the first time this afternoon on a fielder's choice. But good awareness from Egley prevents the runner advancing from third. Then puts the double play death back out on the infield. And now Egley will face Trent Franson, who's one for three today with the ground out, fly out, and a single he had in the third. Egley from the stretch. 
delivers the pitch to Franson. In there, strike one. Outfield playing straight up, as I said, infield. Hoping to get something on the ground here to force a double play and get Egley out of this inning. As Franson calls for time. Still got a good crowd on hand here on both sides. Here today at Don Sanders. 0-1 count here for Egley. Pickoff move to try to get Talbot napping. Not the case as Talbot gets back in time. And then they'll reset here again to keep this going. O one one count, runner on, one out, top of the seventh, pickoff move again, and Talbot gets back in time. Egley trying to do what he can to get as many outs as he can to get the three. Talbot not a really big lead. Here's the 0-1, swing and a miss as... Franson almost went down to a knee there to try to get after that one. That's 78 mile an hour off speed pitch. And the count is 0-2. Franson digs back in, hoping to do something here for the Huskies. Talbot takes his lead from first, not a big one. Here's the 0-2 from Egley. Swung on and hit in the left. Back on it is Rogers for out number two. Solid hit there from Franson, but not as uh, not to be denied was Jack Rogers, as Rogers did not have to move much there. So with two out now, that'll bring up Johnny Gonzalez. Gonzalez 0 for 3 today. Has an RBI to his credit off of Fielder's Choice in the third. That is the only run that's been batted in for HBU. Sam Houston hasn't done much in comparison in a tie ball game. Oh my goodness, that was close that time. Talbot just got back in time on the pickoff move by Egley. Egley now is officially logged in an inning of work, only giving up one hit. He's faced four batters. This is his fifth, is Johnny Gonzalez. And the runner going, Talbot. That one's going to find the outfield as that one's going to be a throwing error for Gavin Johnson to throw in the third offline. And then uh, after all that, the runner goes from first to third, trying to steal second. And the error for Jackson, the second one of the afternoon for the Bearcats as a team. And now with two out, Chase Talbot sits in scoring position at third base. That is not good for the Bearcats as Egley now has a little bit more work to do here with the count 1-0 and oh against Johnny Gonzalez, hoping to prevent the runner from third from reaching. Umpire. Oh, they're going to call for the intentional walk. As Sirianni wants to elect to do that. That puts Gonzalez at third, and he walks him to get to Todd Jackson. He's 0 for 1 today. Catcher for the Huskies. Scared me for a second. I thought it was Bina that was coming up, and he's been hot this series so far. Not the case. They'll Egley will face Jackson. With Gonzalez at first, Talbot at third. That puts the force at second now, and at first. Egley delivers. That pitch dropped by Johnson. It was a ball anyway. 1-0. Bearcats trying to limit the damage. The Huskies, like I said earlier, they have not been good today with runners in scoring position. Faces a 1-0 count. Here it is. That one's in there for a strike. Good pitch from Egley at 80 miles an hour. 1-1. One Bearcats in the bottom of the seventh if this inning ends here. Gavin Johnson, Corbin Vines, Anthony McKenzie will be up. Vines, who's had the best day so far at two and two, two for two. Here's the one-one. Swung on, and that's gonna be up the middle. Base hit for Todd Jackson. The intent walk. Gonzalez to get to Jackson, and that has put the Huskies back in front. And that makes the score two to one in favor of Houston Baptist University.
And so now the runners are now at second and first for Brandon Bima. Bina, excuse me. Who's two for three today and looking a lot like he was last night. He's got a fielder's choice, a double and a single. So the Huskies now have reached six hits in this ball game. Now back in front, two to one. Egley just trying to work out of this and get to the bottom of the seventh to send it to his offense to hope to bounce back from that. Egley checks the runner at second and delivers. Bean uh, hits that one. That might stay on the infield. And camping under it is the third baseman Vines to get him out of the inning. So the one hit by Jackson is enough to give the Huskies the lead back. We're going to the bottom of the seventh. Stretch time here at Don Sanders. Bearcats look to do damage with the bottom of the order coming up next here on 90.5 KSHU. Welcome back to Don Sander Stadium. The Huskies take the lead in the top of the seventh, makes the score two to one in favor of them. Bearcats, the seven, eight, and nine hitters look to do damage right now. If you're just joining us, you've been missing out on a pretty good ball game this afternoon. I'm Carlos Zimmerman here on 90.5 KSHU Huntsville. Also, if you're watching this game on the Bearcat Sports Network YouTube channel, thank you for joining us this afternoon here in Huntsville. Credit to our cameraman here, our lone cameraman today, Jake Vincent, doing a great job here bringing it to you there on YouTube. Here as we are have ended stretch time, we're in the bottom of the seventh, and Gavin Johnson will get ready to face Kyle Gruler, who's in for his seventh inning of work, but he looks to be on a tight leash as they got action up in the bullpen for the Huskies. First pitch to Johnson is in there for strike one. Johnson. Digs back in. Here's the 0-1 from Gruler. That one's off the plate. 1-1. One one. Off-speed pitch coming in there. Change-up. Gruler up over 100 pitches into his seventh inning of work. He's faced 24 batters. And a 1-1 count as Johnson fouls that one. That'll clear the field house and might be rolling towards Bauer Stadium. It's a 1-2 count for him now. One two pitch, Johnson fouls another one back to the screen, another off speed pitch. Quick update for you. Women's basketball falls to St. Stephen F. Austin University 64 to 50 to end the regular season. They will finish at 19 and 10. A tough break for them. Johnson fouls off another one too. Man, making Gruler work. As he'll keep the count at one and two. Johnson just getting late to those pitches to put them in play in hopes to get the Bearcats to tie it or even take the lead. One, two is going to bounce in. That evens the count at two. I'd have to expect here, Grueler is, like I said, on a tight leash. Anything that gets on, he may be pulled out of the ball game. Six innings, three hits, an earned run, four walks, five Ks for Gruler this afternoon. Here's the 2-2. Johnson swings and hits that one. That is going to skate into right field for a base hit. So Johnson is on now with nobody out. And that's good for the Bearcats as he represents the tying run. The go-ahead run comes to the plate here in Corbin Vines, who's been the hot hand for the Bearcats today, hitting two for two with a two singles and an RBI. And it looks like there is not going to be a change here. Grueler is going to stay in at 112 pitches. And we actually are going to have a pit. Nope, it's the, the video board did not have that right. Corbin Vines is the hitter. 
The junior looks to do damage right here. Pickoff move there. Oh, that one got away for a moment from the first baseman, Johnny Gonzalez. Not enough for... Uh, that's actually Lofton over there first. That's what I saw on the video board. It's Lofton that's now in. Jackson Lofton, the sophomore from Klein Collins High School. Pinch running for Gavin Johnson. That's a bunt by Corbin Vines. He'll, as Gruller slaps the tag on him going down the line, that moves Lofton over to second in scoring position. So one out. And that brings up Anthony McKenzie, the nine-hole hitter. With a runner in scoring position. So the sacrifice successful for Corbin Vines. And now McKenzie looks to bring home Lofton. Gruller. Trying to continue to do work here. And then he'll call time for a moment. As the infield will converge to talk with each other. McKenzie today, he's 0 for 1, hit by pitch, only reached first, and he grounded out in the fifth. So Lofton with his legs over there at second, he replaces McKenzie. That might, as that, not McKenzie, that for, uh, oh my goodness, just lost his name. Uh, Gavin Johnson. So you expect that he's an infielder, and, uh, and that might be... Might have another defensive substitution you have. You do have West Falls at your disposal to move to catcher. If you want to make that defensive substitution, if you're Jay Sirianni. But we'll see what happens here, though. In the bottom of the seventh inning, HBU leads 2-1. Grueler, the pitch to McKenzie is low for a ball. First pitch to him of this at-bat is 1-0. Kenzie trying to get the tying run home. Action has slowed down in the HBU bullpen. This is going to come down to Kyle Gruller. 1-0. Off the plate. Just missed. 2-0. and Now the action picks back up in the HBU bullpen. Not sure who that is out there. If there's any switch, we'll let you know. The count now 2-0 and for Kyle Gruller. Lofton leads from second. Showing bunt for a moment was McKenzie. He held back, but the called strike. 2-1, and one, the count on an 88-mile-an-hour fastball from Kyle Gruller, who's up over 115 pitches. So that's impressive for Gruller, the senior from Cy Ridge High School in Cypress, transfer from Wharton County Junior College. Here's the 2-1. That one's in there for a strike. 2-2 two two, the count on the off-speed pitch from Grueler. HBU, as I said, working with a one-run lead. Bearcats look to change that. Right here with Anthony McKenzie. Colton Kowser on deck, who's been quiet today, 0 for 3. Grueler taking his time here. He'll check the runner more than likely. He does. And hoping to get a punch out here. Here's the two. Two. And he does get that punch out. McKenzie down on strikes looking. He's now 0 for 2 today. And that's going to bring up Kowser with two out now in the bottom of the seventh inning. And looks like we're going to have a motion here. And that is going to be the case. That's going to be it for Kyle Gruller. He goes six and two-thirds innings pitched and earned run four hits, four walks, and six strikeouts for him. An excellent job by Gruller today. They call upon another right-handed reliever, does HBU. You'll find out who that is on the other side of this break. We'll be right back on 90.5 KSHU.
pitching change for the Huskies here. It is Andrew Rettmeyer, who is now into the game. Saw him last night on the game that was brought to you here on 90.5 KSHU, the 7-2 loss. He, if I remember correctly, was the reason why the Bearcats was able to string across two runs. So they have that going for the Bearcats as he continues to warm up here. And he will face Colton Kowser, the leadoff hitter. Kowser trying to do some damage, who's been held quiet today. Three flyouts. An infield flyout and two that he got out to sh one he got the shallow right field and another he was able to get out there to left as well. So he's been hitting the ball well. It's just he's not been able to get that ball down. Rettmeyer this season a 13.71 ERA, no strikeouts, not a single strikeout for him. Sorry, let me correct myself. The video board did not have that right. Three strikeouts. One walk to his credit, four earned runs through two and a third innings pitch. Two of those coming last, not coming last night, as those were charged to last night's starter spinning. Kowser will step in with a runner on at second. That's uh, Lofton, Jackson Lofton. And Rittmeyer hopes to get the Huskies out of this inning here, up by one run. As Kowser will look, here's the first pitch. That is low for ball one. 89 miles an hour on the gun. Stat line not quite closed yet for Kyle Gruler as he's responsible for the runner at second. And Rittmeyer taking his time here out of the stretch. Checks the runner. And delivers the 1-0 pitch to Kowser, who looks at strike one. 90 miles an hour on the gun. Another one. The second one today to break that threshold. Scoring line. Huskies two runs, six hits, no errors. Bearcats one run four on four hits and two errors. So it's not been an ideal day defensively for the Bearcats. It's a 1-1 count now. And Rettmeyer will deliver to Kowser, who looks at another strike. One and two. Kowser didn't like that one. Let's the umpire know it. He'll take time here to try and collect himself. To try to make something happen here for the Cats. Brett Meyer sets, has the sign, and delivers. Swung on by Kowser, but playing it well. Bottled for a moment by Franson, but he recovers in time to throw to Gonzalez to get the runner Kowser at first, who now wears the 0 for 4 collar this afternoon. So they get the runner to second, but can't do much with it. The score remains 2-1 to one in favor of the Huskies of Houston Baptist University. We head to the top of the eighth. Due up for the Huskies is Cal Clark, Sean Horgan, and Parker Wayne on the other side of this break here on 90.5 KSHU. here at the dawn. New catcher on, as I predicted, with Lofton coming into the game. West Falls now behind the plate here to catch Garrett Egley, who's now into his technical third inning of work, but is only gone one and one-thirds innings pitched. He's going to look to limit the damage here to nothing as he'll face Clark, Horgan, and Wayne to, here in the top of the eighth as we're coming down the crunch time here in Huntsville. And Clark will come up. He's 0 for 3 today. Has struck out three times. Three of those from Dominic Robinson. So Egley looks to continue what Robinson started against Cal Clark. His batting average today started out inside, out above 300. Has now dipped down to 296. Egley delivers the first pitch. And that is hit hard by Clark. Back on it is Kowser for out number one. So one pitch, one out for Garrett Egley to lead off the eighth. Couldn't ask for a better start for the reliever, Egley. So they got action in the bullpen. They got two guys over there going. A righty and a lefty over in the HBU bullpen. 
Looks to be rather quiet as we may see uh, Rhett Meyer out for another inning of work. Now with one out, here is Sean Horgan to face Egley. Shows bunt and fouls it back. 0-1 will be the count on an 84-mile-an-hour fastball from Egley. Egley get back in, toes the rubber. Shift on for the Bearcats. Stavila's over in shallow right on anything that's hit his way. Egley showing bunt again was... Horgan, but doesn't took it. He actually took that one, and the umpire called that one a ball. Looked pretty good, but it's one and one. Horgan awaits the one one. Shows bunt again. Now a hard bunt right to the first baseman, and he is out at first. What a play by Christian Smith unassisted to get him as sliding in there was Horgan and Smith just beat Horgan to the bat. The HBU dugout thought he was safe. Not the case. So two out now for the Bearcats and Garrett Egley and they'll face Parker Wayne here who's 0 for 3 today with a K fly out and a ground out. Egley doing good work here in this top half of the 8th facing the bottom of the order. First pitch to him is high. 1-0. Wayne will dig back in. Parker Wayne, the junior from Missouri City, Texas, transferred from Howard College. As that one's off the glove of West Falls. 2-0 the count. First time in this inning that the Garrett Egley has uh, gotten behind in the account in the count. Scores two to one in favor of HBU. Top of the eighth. It's been a quiet inning for them so far. Here's the pitch to Wayne. That one's in there for a strike. Two and one is the count. Wayne this season batting 250. Very good with two out. A strikeout today for him. That one, Robinson got him on. Egley with the 2-1 count hopes to get him here. Swing and a miss. 2-2 two and two there with a great 85-mile-an-hour fastball from Egley. That runs the count even. Egley trying to get out of this inning. 1-2-3. Couldn't ask for better. You can send it over to the heart of the order in the bottom of the eighth. Davila. Rogers Touche right here with a strikeout. And that's exactly what he gets... Falls will pick up the drop and throw to first to get to complete the put out. A 1-2-3 inning for Garrett Egley. He does his job. Can the heart of the order do that for the Bearcats as Davila, Rogers, and Touche are due up in the bottom of the eighth inning, down 2-1 to one to HBU. Right, be right back here on 90.5 KSHU as Andrew Rettmeyer is back out on the mound for the Huskies here in the bottom of the eighth. Don Sanders Stadium. We're into the bottom of the eighth inning. Crunch time here for the Bearcats to make something happen. They can do it right here with the heart of the order. Who's had a little bit of a down day today. They're, oh, they're one for seven as a co cohesive unit. Jack Rogers, the only one with a hit. Davila will come up, the freshman from Puerto Rico, to face Andrew Rittmeyer. Davila digs in. 
Brett Meyer will deliver the first pitch to him right here. Davila 0 for 1 today. Swings at the first pitch he sees, and that is gloved by Johnny Gonzalez. And that'll be out number one. One pitch, one out, much like the top of the eighth for Egley. It's the same for Rhett Meyer here in the bottom of the eighth. And so with that, that brings up Jack Rogers, who's 1 for 3 today. Rodgers digs in here, one for three, had that single in the first. He's been quiet since, a ground out in the third, a strikeout in the fifth, hoping to jump on Rentmeyer here. First pitch to him is low for ball one. Rodgers digging in. Nobody on, one out, 1-0 one -oh count. Rittmeyer not getting any of the signs he wants, finally gets what he likes and delivers. Rogers fouls one off his foot. And that had to hurt one and one. As Rogers swung very hard at that one, hoping to put that one out of here to tie the game. As any swing that sends one over the hill, or over the wall, excuse me, ties the game at two. Huskies need five outs to get another win and would officially win the series. Regardless of what would happen tomorrow, that game at 1 o'clock here on 90.5 KSHU, the 1-1 one, one in there for strike two. It's not been quite the opener to Southland Conference play the Bearcats have wanted. They tied it at one point. Now they're down again. Rodgers trying to change that. 1-2 pitch. Swing and a miss. Rodgers down on strikes. That is two outs in the inning for Rentmeyer doing good work here to quiet the heart of the order for the Bearcats now that we get down to the bottom part of that heart of the order. Trent Touche up the junior from Shreveport. Trying to do something here. Now the Huskies just need four outs. Brett Meyer gets the sign delivering from the stretch. Here's the first pitch to Touche. That's called a ball off the plate. 1-0, 86 mile an hour fastball on the gun. Next pitch to Touche is swung on, hit down the right field line, foul. That'll even the count at 1-1 one one as Touche got that one off the end of the bat. Still a good crowd on hand here, hoping for something for the Bearcats to happen right here. Can Touche make something here happen with two out in the bottom of the eighth? Here it is. Pitch is high, two and one, as Rettmeyer now behind in the count. Action in the bullpen for the Bearcats. The HBU bullpen, silent. I don't think there's anyone over there. This is going to be Rhett Meyer's game, it looks like. Touche fouls that one off. That'll even the count at two. That one's out of play. 87 miles an hour from Rhett Meyer. Rhett Meyer, before this at bat, hadn't even logged 10 pitches, so they've been. Bearcats have been jumping on him, but nothing has been able to come to fruition for them. Because they have been. Held scoreless in the first, second, third, five, six, and seven. So you would think this is the time where they come alive if you just do the logical thinking there. But it's not the case so far. Even count. Two, two. Nobody on. Two out. Rip Meyer delivers. And Touche hits that one down the right field line. Going after it is Bina. And he makes the play at the bullpen wall for out number three. I almost thought, almost thought that was going to squeak out a play from the hit by Touche. Not to be and we'll now go to the final inning the top of the ninth inning and the Bearcats will go back to work on defense hoping to limit the damage and hopefully get something to happen in the bottom of the ninth as Garrett Egley's back out to work against the Huskies we'll be right back here on 90.5 KSHU don't go anywhere folks this is going to get exciting
into the top of the ninth. HBU up 2-1 to one over the Sam Houston State Bearcats. Garrett Egley back out for another inning of work, hoping to keep that score where it is so he can give his offense a chance in the bottom of the ninth inning, down 2-1. to one. If you're joining us here on 90.5 KSHU, it's been a great ball game this afternoon. For those of you tuning in on Bearcat Sports Network, have some technical issues with the video right now. They hope to get that back up for you. Hope you're still enjoying the game as well. Soriano will lead off the bottom of the eighth inning here for bottom of the ninth, top of the ninth inning. Excuse me. It's just been a it's been a day for me. Soriano delivers to Egley. The delivery from Egley, excuse me, is called the ball 1-0. Egley, like I said, fourth inning of work. He's gone through two and thirds innings officially. Delivers here to Soriano. Another pitch that's high, 2-0. and Not a good start to this at-bat for Egley. 9-1-2 is due up here. They've been held pretty quiet today. They're 2 for 10. So batting 200 for those guys. Soriano waits for a pitch to hit, and he does. Fouls it back to the screen, 2-1. and one. Soriano takes a second, try and collect himself, and get back into the sap bat against Egley. Bullpen still active for the Bearcats, nothing for HBU. As that one is hit into center for a base hit, another hit for Soriano. He's two for three today, and just like that, that's a runner on for the Huskies, and that looks to be it for Garrett Egley. Take a look here either way. We're going to step aside for just a moment. If it's a new pitcher coming on, we'll tell you all about him when we come back on 90.5 KSHU. Pitching change for the Bearcats here in the top of the ninth with nobody out in the runner at first. They'll bring on the junior left-hander. That is Kyle Backus. Senior left-hander, excuse me, out of Willis High School in New Waverly. Backus looking to get the Bearcats to the bottom of the ninth inning where their hitting can do some damage in the bottom of the ninth inning. Bryce Holmes, Christian Smith, and West Foles will be the ones due up. Trying not to fall back and lose this series to the Huskies, which would come as a shock to everybody. As mentioned earlier, Sam Houston State in the preseason polls were projected to win the Southland for a third straight year this season. The Huskies they didn't even give them a chance at it. They put them last in the Southland Conference. Both these teams find themselves towards the bottom, uh, towards the bottom of the RPI for the NCAA. HBU 287th in the RPI rankings. That's 14 spots above the bottom. And the same Houston towards the middle in 156th. But they are technically in the bottom half of that. You can say the upper bottom half of the RPI rankings. So that gives you an idea of how these two teams are in comparison to the country. That's how you get that there. Chase Talbot was going to be the one up, but they're going to look to go to a pinch hitter here. It is the infielder Jake Mill Miller, a junior from Round Rock, Texas, transfer from Blinn College. So interesting move to take Talbot out, who is 0 for 4 today. Had a rough start at the leadoff spot, and now let's see if Smith does anything, or excuse me, Miller does anything here. Backus, first pitch to him, and, and showing bunt was Miller, not the case. 1 and 0 the count. Backus this season, he hasn't done much, but he, when he's called upon, he's, he's delivered. 
Two innings pitched officially, four strikeouts. So he's done well. Sacrifice move here. Backus gloves it. Will throw to first for the one out. So the sacrifice is successful to move Soriano over to second and into scoring position. But the Bearcats get the out. And that will bring up Trent Franson with one away. Franson today, one for four, a ground out, fly out, fly out, and a single back in the third. Hoping to get that runner from second home and extend this lead for the Huskies. That hit by Soriano was hit number seven on the day. Backus delivers that one. That one nearly hit France and it went to the backstop and so that moves Soriano over to third. France and ducked out of the way of that one. I think Bacchus would prefer he got hit by it so it held Soriano at second. Not the case as Foles could not glove it and now they got the runner at third 90 feet away. Not good if you're the Bearcats. Bacchus trying to collect himself here with one out, 1-0 count. He delivers. Pitches inside and low, 2-0. and oh. Something you just don't see from Bacchus. So that officially is going to be ruled a passed ball as Foles didn't even get a glove on it. He delivers that one, does Bacchus. That one's in there for a strike, 2-1. and one. Soriano tried to jump off third to maybe try and draw a throw. And Bacchus wasn't even looking at him as he's got his back turned to him, the left-hander junior. Bacchus gets set, gets the sign, and delivers a bunt. And that is going to score the run. So a sacrifice is successful again for Franson and the Huskies. That extends the lead for the Huskies to 3-1 to one as Soriano scores on the sacrifice squeeze. That will bring up Johnny Gonzalez. Who's 0 for 3 today, a fly out. Fielder's choice, RBI, K, and a walk. Now the bases are empty for the Huskies as Bacchus looks to just get this to the bottom of the ninth. Wow, Gonzalez showing bunt. This team of the Huskies, they know their small ball, and it has worked for them today. And it just worked for them, too, that scoring that run to extend the lead to two. Not insurmountable, but it's... At this point in the ballgame, it's hefty as Gonzalez swings and misses at that one. One and one now the count. Bearcats pitching definitely a lot better today on the back of Dominic Robinson. We had 10 Ks today. Much better than last night. Gonzalez swings and misses at that pitch. Uh, off speed, 69 miles an hour. Makes the count one and two. Backus one strike away from getting out of the inning and sending this one to the bottom of the ninth. Holmes will lead off the bottom of the ninth for the Bearcats. It's a matter of who are they going to face. 1-2 pitch. Blocked by Foles, but no one on wouldn't advance anybody. So 2-2, two and two, the count is even. Back is trying to collect himself. Senior in his final season. Trying to just limit the damage here at just one run. Gonzalez digs in, 2-2 two -two pitch from Bacchus. In there, strike three, Bacchus strikes out Johnny Gonzalez, who makes him over for today. And this will send this game in Huntsville at Don Sanders Stadium to the bottom of the ninth inning here today. We're going to send it back to Krista, to the studio once again. 3-1 to one your score. Bearcats hope to rally here in the bottom of the ninth inning with the 5, 6, and 7 hitters due up next.
here at Don Sander Stadium. We're into the bottom of the ninth inning. Bearcats find themselves down again. This time a much more manageable lead to try to insurmount. Down 3-1. to one. And Bryce Holmes to lead off the inning. Rhett Meyer back out for an inning of work. Substitution here defensively for the Huskies. Christian Dumont, the junior from Bellevue, Nebraska, is now out in center field. And Bryce Holmes looks to do damage here against Rhett Meyer, who statistically you would think would be able to jump on, but Rhett Meyer has been on it this afternoon. First pitch to Holmes is outside, 1-0. Infield shifted around to the right. The second baseman and first baseman trying to play anything that goes their direction. Holmes trying to get it out into the outfield and down to get himself on. Here's the 1-0. Holmes hits one high, and it's just going to hang up there. Coming in to get it is the right fielder, Bina, for out number one. Huskies two outs away from going up 2-0 in this season series to kick off Southland Conference play. And with that, that will bring up Christian Smith, who's 0 for 2 today. Christian Smith. Christian Smith trying to just get on for the Bearcats. That's what they need right now is base runners. Brett Meyer delivers the first pitch to Smith, and it is off the plate, 1-0 and and inside. Tying run is in the on-deck circle. That is West Falls that's out there. Smith trying to get on to get it to Falls. 1-0 pitch from Rhett Meyer. Swung on, a hit to the shortstop. Gloved over there by Soriano. Throw on to first, and that is out number two, and the Bearcats down to their final out, and that will bring up West Falls. Ball's the last hope here for the Bearcats this afternoon. Big thanks to our production crew for Bearcat Sports Network and Krista McIntosh back in the studio here on 90.5 KSHU. Big thanks to her sticking it out here this afternoon, her second day of work. Big thank you to Krista as that first pitch from Rhett Meyer is a ball 1-0. Falls digs back in. Rhett Meyer trying to get the save. A three-inning save. That one was low. 2-0. and oh, So he's now behind in the count here. No action in the bullpen for the Huskies as they look to this be, for this to be it right here against Falls. 2-0 pitch from Rhett Meyer is in there for a strike. Runs the count to 2-1 and one on an 83-mile-an-hour fastball. Fines would be next should the inning continue. 2-1 pitch. Swung on, foul back to the screen. Bearcats down to their final strike. Falls is on it. Just trying to put something in play and keep the inning going and get the tying run to the plate. Falls digs in. Rhett Meyer gets the sign, and he will deliver the 2-2 pitch. Swing and a miss, and the ball game is over. The Houston Baptist Huskies come in today again against Sam Houston State, and they do enough today just to beat the Bearcats. 3-1 to one your final as the Huskies will officially win the series regardless of what happens tomorrow as they are up 2-0 in Southland Conference play, so that's good for them. Bearcats fall to 0-2 in Southland Conference play. They will be back here tomorrow at 1 o'clock in the afternoon here at Don Sanders Stadium. You'll hear Megan Montgomery and Tony Swain on the call. For Jake Vincent, our cameraman here, Krista McIntosh back in the studio. I am Carlos Zimmerman signing off on 90.5 KSHU. Thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. You've been listening to Bearcat Baseball on 90.5 KSHU Huntsville. Have a good evening, everybody, and a happy spring break. Goodbye from Don Sanders.